Okay, so what we're asked to do um, <coughs> be modeling, we're going to be looking at objects and, and thinking about modeling them. So here I have a pencil, and um, you can use a pencil as well. You're going to have to modify just slightly for your calculations. But let's just, let's just take a look at what we have here. We're supposed to look at real objects in the real world and think about how some of the geometric shapes that we've identified can be used to model those. So when I look at this object here, I see three parts. I see a part up front, okay, that represents to me a cone. Okay, I see a cone that is the shave part of this um, object here, okay. And then I see another part that goes from where the shave, where the cone starts, you know, from there to here. This I see a hexagonal prism. Okay, I see one, one, two, and everything I write is disappearing, but that's okay. Three sides, you know, on this side, and I figure on the other side there would be three more sides, so I would call that a hexagonal prism. Okay. And I'm going to assume that it is a um, regular hexagon for the base, for the bases of the prism, top and bottom. I don't think that just because this looks wider than that, I think that's because it's an angle, and that's it. Then this last part, from right about where the cylinder starts, or I'm sorry, where the metal band starts, up through here, I see this as a cylinder, right? So. Now I'd need to answer some kind of question. Now maybe maybe the question goes like this. You know, what is the volume of this pencil? So maybe they're getting ready to pack this pencil inside of, I don't know, uh, some fluid or I, for whatever reason they need to understand the volume of it. Okay, maybe they're going to make it out of um, a plastic mold. They're going to make a copy of this and they want to understand how much plastic is going to get poured into the mold. So they need to know the volume of it. So what I would do is I would think of the three different parts. So let's do that. Let's actually, um, I've got some images here that I've Google searched that kind of represent each of the parts. So let's take a look at the cylinder here. The cylinder to me represents, sorry, I cancel there. Let me get my thing. The, the cylinder represents to me the eraser part on top of the pen, okay? And um, let's see, we're going to also need the hexagonal prism. So I'll open that up. Oh boy, that, that guy's enormous. Let me shrink him down a little bit. Oh boy. I'll leave him there. I'm going to bring this guy over here and I'm hoping that I can shrink him down. Otherwise it's not going to be a whole lot of use to me. Uh, maybe I'm not going to get a lot of use out of that. Well, we could kind of look at it for a minute. Notice that it's got a hexagon for a base, and then it's got a height. So for us to calculate volume, we need to know both the area of the base times the height. And you might remember having done that already, figuring out the um, area of three-dimensional objects. And then the last piece we have here is the cone, right, which is where we really started the measure of the cone. So I have a um, 3D cone here. Oh boy, that's also just enormous. I don't know if I'm going to be able to change that much either. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. But we'll, we'll look at it real quick for a second. We can see what we have is we have a circle for a base and then it rises to the top. Okay, so we will move this guy out of the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the volume of each of these parts and then add them together, okay, to represent our um, the total the total shape here. So let's let's write out real quick what these formulas are. So the the formula the so formula for so what we're going to actually what we're going to do is the volume of the prism. We'll go volume of the cone, that's the tip, plus the volume of the prism, plus the volume of the cylinder, equals the volume of the pencil. So now we would need to figure out how do we find the volume, 
the volume of the cone, which I will just call um, VC, okay? So that's going to be equal to the area of the base, right, times um, the height, right? But with a cone, then what we have to do is we have to multiply that by one third. And we're shaving away two thirds of it. So that'll be my area of the cone, or my volume of the cone. The volume of the prism is going to be simply, sorry, the VP we'll call it, v, VP, which is the area of the base times the height, okay? And the volume of the cylinder, which I will call, let's call it VCY, okay? Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna take the area of the base there and, you know, times the height. So these are the things that I'm gonna be working on here. So let's talk about how we find the area of the base of a cone. Okay, so we'll look closely at the cone real quick. The cone has a circle for the base. So the area of the base of the cone is going to be equal to, let's put that in there, equal to pi times r times r, right? Or pi r, do this squared, right? Pi r squared, okay? So that means that the, that means actually if we put that in there, Therefore, the volume of the cone is equal to pi times the radius um, squared plus the height. Oh, oh, times the height, rather. Times the height of the cone. Okay. So there's our, there's our first formula. We'll use that for the cone. How about for the cylinder? Okay. Well, again, the cylinder, we, we have over here that the, it is the, the volume of the cylinder is the area of the base times the height. The area of the base, the base is a circle. So we go the vol, VCY, VCY is equal to, sorry, um, pi times R squared times the height, okay? Um, and this is the height of the cylinder here, which may not be the same height as the cone, okay? But that is going to be our volume of the cylinder. Okay, and then lastly, we have the area of the hexagonal prism. Okay, so what's the formula for the area of the hexagonal prism? Well, you might, you might remember that. We're gonna have to figure that out from here. Um, so this one actually is going to take a bit of work, okay? So the area, uh, let's see, so the VP, volume of the prism, is going to be equal to the, um, uh, let's just do it like this, area of the prism is equal to the, now this is a complicated formula, you might remember, it had to do with the dissections of all the triangles. So we take the number of triangles times one half times the side length times the apothem. Okay, so that's then the volume of the prism. So the volume of the prism is going to be equal to the number of triangles or number of sides times one half times the side times the apothem times the height. Okay, Okay. so we kind of have a formula there as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, gonna have to figure out that apothem, but let's give some dimensions here. So we can just actually just make this up. Let's just say this is, I don't know, four. This has a radius of four millimeters. So we'll go, this is four millimeters is our radius. So that's going to pretty much stay the same here at the cylinder. So this would be equal to 4 here, the radius here, and at the top and at the bottom. 
It's also going to be the radius at the base of our cone. So that radius is going to be, oh boy, let's see, radius is, <laughs> radius is, oh, it's lost. But it's going to be equal to 4, that's going to be equal to 4, I can't write it. 4, radius here is going to be equal to 4 as well, okay. And then, now when we look at this, oh, let's see if we can move things a little bit. When we look over here, we have a little bit of a different problem. So in this case, I don't know if I can draw this very well, but the radius is this measure, right? That's this measure here. And that's going to be 4. You know, we should change this to 5 maybe, make it a little bit easier. We'll call it 4, that's fine. So there is the measure of the radius, it's 4. What we need is the side length and the apothem. Well, the good news for us, the good news for us is what? Well, the good news for us is this, that in this case, all of these triangles, are six of them, they're equilateral. So I know that if the radius is four, then also my side length is four. So four is equal to the, the radius and the side length. But what I don't know, oops, side length, oh, that's ugly. What I don't know is the height of the triangle. So now we have to actually think of this as a right triangle. We have a right triangle problem to solve. So we have a hypotenuse that is four. Now remember, if we were trying to find this apothem, it's the one that's gonna go right up here from the center to the side at a right angle. It's going to come down at a right angle. So this right here is a right angle. So we know that this is going to be half of that because it's going to it's going to bisect this side here. So we're going to have a side of two and a hypotenuse of four. And now we need to do some Pythagorean theorem. So let's move all this stuff over. Oh boy, that's not going to really work. Let me pause this. We'll do it on paper. All right. Again, we have we have our cylinder right here that's going to be the the pointy part of the pencil we have our hexagonal prism Ooh, I didn't draw that well at all right now we've got this not drawn to scale maybe it's a three-dimensional I don't know anyway our cylinder we know has a radius of four millimeters okay four millimeters and of course the cone also has a radius of four millimeters okay we'll, we'll just make up a number for the height we'll call it six millimeters for the height and here this is going to be a little bit shorter so let's call this maybe also four millimeters for that height now our prism here this is the long part so maybe we'll call this I don't know uh, 64 millimeters okay and then we're looking inside, as we look at this hexagonal prism, we have a regular hexagon, right? Which we dissect into six triangles. And it turns out, because it's regular, all of these are equilateral. We said that this dimension, we think from the center of the pencil to this, this edge right here is gonna be four millimeters. And so now let's look at this one triangle here, okay? What it's going to look like is this. So now we have to figure this measurement because our formula uses the apothem. This is the apothem of the triangle, of the, of, uh, of the I'm sorry, of that prism, of the regular hexagon. And so we've got to calculate that. We're going to think of this as a right triangle. We know that it's going to divide evenly. So this hypotenuse is 4 and this is 2. And that's where we kind of ended up. Remember, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So we're going to put in leg squared plus 2 squared equals the hypotenuse. Ooh, well, the hypotenuse is 4 squared. So we have leg squared plus 4 equals 16 we're going to subtract 4 from both sides, and we're going to get leg squared equals 12. And then we take the square root of both sides, and we get that this leg 
is equal to the square root of 12, which we can say is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which is equal to 2 root 3. Okay, so we know the height here is 2 root 3. Now let's remember our formula that we had written out before. Okay, we had um, the volume of the cone plus the volume of the prism plus the volume of the cylinder is going to be equal to the to each of the um, uh, to the total for the pencil. That's equal to the volume of the pencil. All right. All right. So the volume of the cone. We said that volume was equal to the area of the base. The area of the base is pi r squared times the height. We have the radius is 4, so this is the vol volume of the cylinder, and then that's times 1 third. Don't forget that. So we have the volume of the cone is equal to, the volume of the cone is equal to pi times 4 squared, that would be 16, times 6 times 1 over 3. Well, I know 6 times 1 over 3, that's 6 over 1 times 1 over 3, so that just becomes 2. So times 16 times pi. So this volume is 2 times 16, that's 32 pi. So that is my volume of my cone. Okay. Okay. Let's work through the volume of the. Oh, let's do the cylinder next. The volume of the cylinder should be pretty easy. The volume of the cylinder is equal to the area of the base times the height. And the area of the base is pi r squared. And the height is like that. Okay, so the area of the base times the height. Now the only thing we have to do is plug in these numbers. So what do we have? Um, the radius is 16. So we have pi times 16 times the height, that's 4. So now that turns into 64 pi. So that is our volume of this cylinder. So now we've got this part figured out. The cone, the cone is figured out, okay? The cylinder is figured out. We need to figure out this here. So we said the area, what we do for the prism, the volume of the prism was going to be equal to the area of the base, right? times the height there. We know the height was 64, but how do we find the area of the base? Remember it was n times one half times the side length times the apothem. This is just the area of one triangle, right? Times, and that's the formula for the area of the triangle, times the number of triangles. So, um, and that'd be times 64, so that'll be the volume of the prism. So here we go, how many sides are there? There's gonna be six, because it's a hexagon, times one half, times the side length is four, right? I mean, the full side length here would be four, times, and we have, you know, we have six triangles, so we have four, 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 like that. So we have to do the whole thing, times the apothem, and this is where it gets a little tricky, because this is two root three, okay? And that is times 64. So six times one half is three, because half of six is three, times four, that is 12. 12 times two root three is 24 root three times 64. So I'm not gonna fight that anymore. We're gonna put that together right here on my calculator. What is 24 root three times 64? And that's going to be 192 root 3. So now what we do is we add everything together. What is uh, the volume of the cylinder, right? We're going to, or rather, the volume of the cone plus the volume of the prism plus the volume of the cylinder. The volume of the cone, we said, was 32 pi plus the volume of the prism, we said, is 192 root 3 plus the volume of the um, cylinder was 64 pi. Let's go ahead and add all that together. All right, we got it just written down here, and we'll go ahead and enter that in. So we're going to go 32 pi plus 192 square root 3 
plus 64 pi equals. We, get, we really combine these like terms. See, these are irrational numbers, pi. And root 3 is irrational as well. So you can't really add them up. But because these are like terms, we end up with 96 pi plus 192 root 3. Well, let's say we wanted to give an answer to the boss. And we were going to round it to the nearest cubic millimeter. So let's round uh, to the nearest cubic millimeter. So now I just hit control enter here, control enter, and I get 634.147, so I'd round that down to 634. So my answer would be 634 millimeters cubed. Okay, now what I need you to do is you're going to take an object, and it can be a pencil if you'd like, has the same shapes, but if you do do a pencil, I want you to modify it. So instead of having six sides, maybe you give it eight sides, something. Um, uh, and, and instead of using my measurements of four millimeters and all that, modify your measurements just, just ever so much, okay? And just work through um, your problem and then do a move note explaining it. Okay, so that's going to be your assignment in this adventure.